Let's study together the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 to 28. This passage that we are about to read can also be found in, found in the other Synoptic Gospel, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, verses 29 to 31. And also in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 to 27. The particular passage in the Gospel of Luke captures my imagination as I try to understand and try to absorb the prophetic significance of, of our present time, of what's happening all around us, of, of the great tragedies that are, that are unfolding right before our very eyes, of the terrible times that we are living in, and the troubles that lies ahead for all of us. Luke Chapter 21, verse 25 to 28, describes a very vivid, succinct revelation of what will happen just as it comes out from the words of Jesus, from the mouth of Jesus, just before the Messiah, the Lord God, comes again for you and for me. Isn't that a beautiful, a beautiful uh, thought for us tonight? That in spite of what's happening, we have the Word of God to rely on and to uh, take comfort and find courage to, to continue to hope for His second coming. Verse 25, it says there, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Friends, these signs that Jesus was talking about had already happened early in the 18th century. As we progress through the 21st century, the, the falling stars and this, this other cosmic phenomena. And this is exactly what the gospel predicted and it happened. But listen to the next few words, the words of Jesus Christ. And on the earth, distress of nations. Yes, we have heard so many wars has been fought for, for ages, for centuries, and for generations. But this time, where we experience the, the revolutions that are happening right now, especially in the Middle East, that swept the world in just a rapid succession of times, we are, we are caught into this, this drama that as we read this Gospel, we are reminded that indeed the Bible tells us that the nations will be distressed. There are many reasons why they are distressed, friends. There are so many reasons why they are perplexed. And the Bible says, with perplexity. And the Bible did not stop there. The Bible continues to describe the events just before the second coming of Jesus Christ happens. The sea and the waves roaring. It blows my mind away that this gospel was so precise that right now I am seeing what the Bible is predicting. Just about a few hours ago, I, I, I read in a breaking news in, in the internet about what happened in Japan. Just recently as well, what happens in New Zealand, a great earthquake had struck, was so heartbreaking. But this earthquake that had happened in the past few hours was just devastating beyond words. That it's just melting your heart to say that there is no place that is safe. The big one had happened. The big one that they call happened right before our very eyes. And I'm just wondering when it will happen in our own state here in California. Friends, the Bible warned us that when just before the end of time comes, these things will happen specifically Earth's distress, Earth's nations are distressed with perplexities and the sea and the waves roaring. After the earthquake, there had been warnings of tsunami 
all over the places here in the Philippines, Russia, in California, as well as in, in the Caroline Islands. Just so vivid as you read the Bible. Verse 26, it continues to say, Man's hearts failing them from fear. Isn't that very true? People right now are starting to starting to feel that there is no safety, there's no security. There is just no uh, there's just no soundness of, 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 the, of what's happening right now. The Bible predicted man's hearts failing them from fear. And the expectations of those things, meaning the bad things, which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 27 it continues, and this is very beautiful. For those of us who have been waiting for the for, for most part for the most part of our lives as Seventh-day Adventist Christians or as Advent Christians who have been waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we, we question our faith, sometimes we question our we question our 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 reasons, our motivations. Why is Jesus not yet coming? But I would like to assure you today that the Bible is very precise. And the Bible commands accuracy. That indeed, just before Christ will come to take us home, these things will happen. Verse 27, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Isn't that an awesome, isn't that an awesome promise? This is a Messianic hope that we need to embrace and to just absorb as we see ruins, as we see rubbles, as we see just the, the ramifications of, of what is happening around the world. Beautiful promise. Verse 28, now when these things begin to happen, like earthquakes, tsunamis, economic collapse, crimes, lawlessness, catastrophic, cataclysmic events, look up. The Bible did not say Look behind you, look look beside you. The Bible says specifically, look up. And I imagine during the time when, when the Israelites were led by Moses from the, from the land of Egypt, from the land of slavery, to the land of freedom. As they traveled through, they, 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 were, they were traveling through and they came across the Great Sea, the Red Sea. Beside them were, were deserts and mountains. Behind them, Pharaoh's armies decided to, to just chase them down and take them back and make them slaves once again. And as the people of God begins to, to, to fear and tremble that their, that their future is uncertain when they... When they that they cannot cross the Red Sea, that they that they cannot escape on both sides, and that they cannot go back because of the, the Egyptian armies. They complain and call upon Moses, what to do? You brought us here to be slaughtered by these Egyptians. What should we do? And Moses gathered all the strengths that he can, all the strength that he can from God. And he looked up, and behold, the miracle of the Red Sea happened. Friends, when we look up, the Red Sea of challenges in our lives will be open. When we look up to God, He will hear us because He had made a promise. When bad things, when calamities, catastrophes, chaos, crisis comes, Instead of looking on the sides and look at my dear friends, look up, the Bible says. Look up, lift up your heads, 